All right, this right here is the Realme 10 Pro Plus, which of course is the newest phone that comes from the house of Realme, which is supposed to be the successor to the last year's very successful 9 Pro Plus. Now the highlighted feature of this phone is the fact that it offers a curved display, which is probably the first phone to offer this feature under Rs 25,000. But of course, as we've seen multiple times, if you are bringing a flagship kind of a feature in a budget segment, then you have to do some cost cutting. So what are the cost cuttings done on the Realme 10 Pro Plus, if any? And more importantly, is the display the only highlight here or is the phone actually packing some power in itself? Does it prove to be a worthy successor? Let's answer all of them. This is one from GTR and you're watching my in-depth review of the Realme 10 Pro Plus. And in today's video, we'll just find out that, well, yes, the device is gold, it does glitter, but does everything that glitter actually become gold? All right, so of course, let's address the elephant in the room. And of course, I'm not talking about myself, I'm talking about the display here. The Realme 10 Pro Plus comes with a full HD plus curved display with a 120Hz refresh rate and a peak brightness of 950 nits. It's easily the best possible display in the segment, especially when it comes to colors, quality, refresh rate, and of course, the design. Now, some slight things that I want to highlight is that the curved bezels here are as manual as they can be. And the chin here is almost the same as the forehead, making the display look very good. As far as the outdoor brightness is concerned, everything is visible on it for the most part. And the refresh rate of 120Hz makes everyday browsing and gaming pretty smooth on it. Now, when it comes to content consumption, while the device is rated for HDR10+, Netflix currently does not support any HDR capabilities, but of course you still get Wideband L1, so you can still stream videos in full HD resolution without any issues. Also, under the display, you'll find a great fingerprint scanner, which is fast. And of course, you can also use it for measuring your heart rate if you want to. Also, aiding the content consumption department, the phone comes with stereo speakers. Now, Realme UI comes with a volume boost feature for the products, where if you increase the volume one more time after it reaches 100%, it will go up to 200%. Now, personally, I do not recommend using this feature because, of course, it will hamper the life of your speakers. But of course, there are instances where you might want to use this feature. So, of course, it's a handy feature to have. Now moving along, let's talk about the design here. Now the first thing that you'll notice when you take this device in your hand is just how comfortable it is. It's very lightweight and it just fits inside your hand like a glove. Now, a lot of people will ask about the material quality and while this is a plastic build, I personally do not care about it. Personally, I am never bothered by whether it's a glass build, plastic build or whatever. All I care about whether the device offers a premium feel or not. Unfortunately, that's not the exact case here. You do not get a complete premium feeling here, but the ergonomics and the lightweight form factor more than make up for it. Also, there's no official IP rating here and the display is mentioned as double reinforced glass, but again, there's no certification or mention of it being Gorilla Glass. Also, while on the topic of the design, one more thing that I'd like to compliment Realme for is the haptics. Like the haptics motor of this device is so well tuned that it's, in my opinion, easily the best device to type on in this price segment. Like the haptics are genuinely that refined. All right, so moving along, let's talk about the performance here. And the phone comes with a Dimensity 1080 5G processor coupled with 8 GB of RAM and 128 GB of UFS 2.2 storage. Now the benchmarks are on your screen and as you can see, the phone is pretty good when it comes to synthetic tests. And in fact, even in day-to-day -day usage, the performance of the device has been absolutely flawless. The apps open fast and they stay open for as long as you want, at least for the most part. Everything feels zippy and quick throughout the UI and you'll hardly notice any heating here. In fact, even in the CPU throttling test, the performance throttles to just 92% of its peak performance. As far as gaming is concerned, the overall experience of the device is pretty good. Now sure, you can push BGMI to HDR plus ultra presets as well, but in that scenario, you will notice some frame drops here and there with the more time you spend inside the game. But nonetheless, as an overall package, I am pretty satisfied with this device. Now, of course, the software plays a crucial part when you talk about performance, and this phone comes with Realme UI 4.0 based on Android 13 right out of the box. Which also means that this is one of the first devices to come out with Android 13 right out of the box. Now, the software here is very well refined, smooth, and with zero bugs so far. Also, when it comes to updates, the phone will get two years of software updates and three years of security updates. Okay, so moving along, let's talk with the camera now. 
The phone packs in a 108 MP Pro Lite camera coupled with an 8 MP ultra wide sensor and a 2 MP ultra macro lens. Up front, you get a 16 MP selfie shooter. Now from the main lens, the 108 MP sensor is put to good use. The shots are excellent with details, colors and saturation and you also get a good level of dynamic range here. In fact, the HDR here is on point for most shots from the main lens. However, in case of extreme lighting conditions, it does suffer a little bit. Moving on to indoor shots, they are great in terms of sharpness and colors. However, they could use some tuning here and there to adjust for the lighting. Moving on to the ultra wide sensor, it outputs similar results at least in terms of maintaining colors as compared to the primary sensor. However, the details and the dynamic range do go down a notch. But nonetheless, it's still pretty good if you compare it with most of the competitors out there. Moving on to selfies, in good lighting, the shots are good with natural details and good HDR. However, in a little bit of less than ideal conditions, it can definitely mess up the skin tones. Lastly, we have videos which are mostly average. Now, stabilization is not that great and there is plenty of color shifting here and honestly the HDR is a little bit average as well. Lastly, we have the battery. Now the phone comes with a 5000mAh battery with support for 67 watts of fast charging, although the phone does come with an 80 watt charger inside the box. Now, as far as the charging speed is concerned, you can easily take it from 0 to 100% in less than 50 minutes. And as far as the battery life goes, you can easily push this thing for a complete day with heavy usage without any complaints. Alright, so so far we've been talking about everything that glitters and is actually gold. But that is not to say that the phone in itself is all good. I mean, there are definitely some complaints that I have with the device. So let's talk about them individually. First up is the performance factor. Now, while the 120Hz refresh rate sounds good and is maintained throughout for the most part, there are some instances where the phone just drops the refresh rate down to 60Hz. Now, this is especially evident when you are using most of Google's own apps, which is kind of surprising. Also, speaking of apps, the phone comes with a ton of bloatware. Now, sure, most of it is uninstallable, but still, it's a lot of bloatware here. Also, speaking of apps, there's this thing which is quite similar to Xiaomi's devices where whenever you try to install an app, the phone has a scanner which will just scan each individual app. However, unlike Xiaomi, disabling that service requires a very tedious process, which I'm not a fan of. I mean, consider this scenario where you're just setting up a new device and you have like 50, 60 different apps installing in the background. Unfortunately, those background tasks will still be brought to the forefront because each and every time that app is installed, the phone will still scan for virus because real me things. Also, another weird bug that I noticed is that if you try to play back 4K 60fps HDR videos on this device, the playback is very choppy. Also, forget that, play back any 4K video and then just swipe up to basically shift to the picture-in-picture -picture mode. The entire device becomes so sluggish, it just starts to lag and it's like ghost touches happening. It's not actually ghost touches, but it's just the response time of each of your touch is so delayed that you feel like, what the hell is going on? But can all of these things be ironed out? Sure, they can be. I mean, these are all things that can be fixed with a software update. And considering how many software updates that the Realme 9 Pro Plus received, I have high expectations of the Realme 10 Pro Plus. Which brings us to the verdict. Is the Realme 10 Pro Plus worth it? Absolutely. Is it actual gold or just a shimmery object? Well, from my perspective, it's pretty close to being actual gold. And well, that was it. If you found this video helpful, make sure to let us know by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel for more awesome tech content. Till then, this is one from GTR and I'll see you in the next one.